Alex Kane, your new MLW World Heavyweight Champion, as he defeats Alexander Hammerzone at MLW's Never Say Never. And for that, 865 some odd day reign as champion. I believe that's where we are right now with that belt. And I'm just trying to remember how far. And forget how many people have already held the belt. We're going to go through it one quick time. Because of all the people they've had to go ahead and hold the belt, Alex Kane now is officially the 10th MLW World Heavyweight Champion ever. And in the modern era, since April 2018, he's now the sixth, sixth wrestler that has held the World Heavyweight title of all that. So actually, excuse me, 641 days plus as champion. And if I put that exact date right now, just to get an idea of how many days it's been, 643 days. There we go. 643 days since October 2nd, 2021, when Alexander, Alexander Hanstone won at Fight Atlanta 2021. And that's a year, nine months, and five days. Quite a long run. Hammerstone... People were getting exhausted with him being champion. He'd already run through the roster. Alex Kane groomed to be the next champion, and he got the belt. And Corbin is pretty, not predictable, but he's logical in his booking. You got to give him that for what they're doing here with this program and what they're doing with this this whole setup. So it's good. I like what they did. I like what they turned things out. It was smart. So in the matches we had tonight, first off, Quite a cur curtain trigger with Jacob Fatu, who's now holding the national openweight title. He just recently won it over John Hennigan, you know, Johnny TV now, Johnny Nitro, Johnny Impact, <laughs> Johnny Mundo, all those other Johnnies. And Calvin Tankman, I haven't seen in a while. Last time I remember, he was heavyweight, yeah, he was the uh, tag team champions. And, you know, wasn't it with him and Ijo and Duka, right? But EJ Nduka's already left. He's gone on to greener pastures and left the roster. And Calvin Tangman, he's still big boy, man. Heavyweight hustle. Still big boy. He's still out there. They got a good story with him. Him and his daughter. They kind of played up to that. Jacob Fatu. They had a really good match, by the way. Those are some big super heavyweights that, you know, if WWE had their chance to get after them, I'll tell you like this. I feel like sometimes Court Bauer does find some diamonds in the rough that would work well in WWE. I really do. Something tells me that if Court Bauer were to ever be setting himself up as the developmental system for WWE, I think he would do a really good job. I really do think that if he had the money for it, oh, I think he would do. But of course, there's no relationship like that. But because of his time as a, as a writer for SmackDown and for being on TV over there watching during the, the very heyday, the post attitude era, the ruthless aggression era, he gets it. And so guys like Alexander Hammerstone and Richard holiday and MGF, remember MGF, that's where I first saw him in MLW out there with Arya Blake, a company of ringside, right before anything else was going on. And then when he used to have somebody to go ahead and blast on, uh, in interviews was Alicia too, back in the day. But, you know, we had the Dynasty not too long ago, back 2019, right? Well, before AEW, right? With Holiday, Hammerstone, MJF, you know, it was great. It was a really good time. And they haven't had that in a while. Because, you know, when you compare with what they were doing before and how long it's been since they've had a really solid night of action like we go back to the last time i had a live pay-per-view that really stood out for them it was cicero stadium july 5th 2019 that's the last time they were on pay-per-view and look at the names they did have at that time so savia vega was out there they the, obviously the triple a part of the roster was definitely there but they didn't have so much of that now not as of late like they, they've definitely you know there's been changes since then so back at the time country unit was still going on and Spirit Squad, oh my God, that Spirit Squad. And that was in the uh, the pre-show matches, right? And so what was it? MJF and Richard Holiday against the Von Erics and a Texas Tornado match for the MLW World Tag Team titles. And the Von Erics won the tag team titles that night. Injustice. Oh my God, I forgot Injustice. 
Jordan Oliver, Coto Brazil, Myron Reed over Gringo Loco, Puma King, and Septimo Dragon in a six man tag. Teddy Hart. That guy was still like on money. The Hart Foundation there with him and Davy Boy Smith, it was good. I really did enjoy it. And it's just a shame that he just can't help himself, man. He just kind of fell apart. And then in with Brian Pillman Jr. also. Good stuff. And that match, those matches that night were really good, man. And some of the people that were on that original pay-per-view got on this time as well. No missing on that. So Teddy Hart over Austin Aries that night. Low-key over Brian Pillman Jr. Low-key was a former World Heavyweight Champion. Tom Lawler, former World Heavyweight Champion over Timothy Thatcher, who comes back tonight after a bit of time. Oh, obviously, with the NXT, he was looked at. And don't tell me that, you know, people don't look at Court Bauer's roster and say, hey, you know what? There might be some people to pick up off of here. You just, you know, I don't think the MLW gets enough of a look or enough of a, a presence. I'm happy now they got the Fight Plus deal. It was easy to go and watch on there. I mean, you know, they're going to pay the subscription. I'd like to see if, if NWA could get back on there and go on the Fight Plus deal. And then together, those two shows could have pay-per-views. And you know what? If, N if N NWA and MLW both had their pay-per-views regularly on Fight Plus, I'd probably subscribe. But I'm, I already went ahead and took the seven-day free trial, took it off. I'll probably come back on in September, and I'll tell you why. Because MLW's got more pay-per-views coming up now. They're going to go monthly, and that's great. We need that right there. Monthly pay-per-views, them live is a wonderful idea. So I like that. And that's just, that's where we're going to go and go. And then back in those days, what was it? Mance Warner over Jimmy Havoc and Base DSA Ace, Ace and Amber Alexander Hammerstone had the national openweight title at that time. And now he moved up here. And then going back, McContry as Jacob Fatu against LA Park, accompanied by Selena DeLorenta. Selena, I miss you. I miss you so much. I don't know where you've gone or what you've done. But it's a shame because she was wonderful. And at the moment, I don't know what she's been doing as of late. If she's been doing anything at all as of late. But at the moment, last thing we heard was she did go to try out in WWE. And that's pretty much it there. And they wanted her to go ahead and work in the ring and not cut a promo. When the thing was that she was best as a manager and she'd only had so many matches under her belt. So they didn't do well with her. And it's just a shame that it all happened. Cause I mean, what was it? 2021 she's gone and I don't know whatever happened to her, but I miss Selena De La Renta. I don't know what was the fallout and I wish I knew, but we haven't heard anything from her in a while. And it's a damn shame. Because at the moment, I don't see her doing anything else. Well, now she is doing some work in the, like some movie production stuff. Like she's off in other projects, but I do miss her being out here. And, you know, that's all there is to it. It's just a shame. But I'm just going to say this again. I loved Selena De, De La Renta as a manager. Why nobody else picked her up? I don't know what it could be, but Cor Bauer, I said this four years ago whatever it is, you got to hold on to this girl. And I don't know what happened to her and why she's not here now, but I mean, she must be active. She's still out there. And she, by the way, she was, she is young. Let me just make that point too. She is young. And right now, when she was in the business over there, four years ago, she was 22 years old and she was incredible. The impresaria, the Puerto Rican power broker, La Bruja. She was wonderful. And I'd love to see her back. I don't know. The other thing, too, is that uh, Cesar Duran is not part of the whole deal. Of, the Azteca part has also not been part of any of this. And I want to know what's happening there. So there's changes in MOW. I don't know what that's going to go on, but there's obviously been a culture change over there. And we did have a lot of times where they had quite a bit of work they were doing in Mexico, and they were doing a lot of shows from there. And most recently, they had a lot of tapings that were from 2300 Arena, which is great. But I, I want the Mexican flair back. I want the AAA stuff back. And more importantly, I want Selena De La Renta back. Please, Corp Bauer, from, I mean, listen, I don't know how many people are doing a post show for MLW tonight, but I am because I like this product and I watch it. I'll admit, I'm going to be honest. I always watch it on YouTube. 
and I struggled. I really struggled to try to watch it on, on reels. It's not a channel to go to on a regular basis. And it wasn't online to stream. That was my problem. Everybody else has some way to go and stream their content. And so when you took it off of YouTube for a while, it did make it tough. I watched like a handful of them. Without that online access, it's very difficult. Very difficult for me. And even for fight, I'll watch fight stuff on the, for pay-per-views, but not much everything else. Just saying that, too. So, I am making a plea again. Please bring back Selena De Laurenta. Please. I love her. Not just because she's gorgeous, but she's a great manager. She's fantastic. And let me tell you something. If you wanted to give me the LWO, and you wanted to have somebody out there to accompany those people to the ring and they were a heel faction they got the phantasma D wwe missed the boat okay they missed the boat with legato the phantasma we did not need electra lopez we didn't need her she's a non-factor did you want to make legato the phantasma or the lwo right now effective not even selena vega selena vega could be on her own she doesn't need to be attached okay i love her too but selena de la renta would have been a fantastic manager. A fantastic manager for Legato the Fantasma or LWO. I'm just saying that. That's my opinion. And I know I've put that out there before, but you know, everybody wants to go and say that they had their own thing. That's just the way I felt. And by the way, I also missed jo Joseph Samuel. He was great. Contrary was great. Maybe we bring them back too. Just saying. There were just certain things about the product that really just stood up. And all those just overlying things that they would have. Right now, they got the calling. And Raven's got his thing going on. And, and that was that's good so far. I enjoy it. Now, back to the matches. Okay. So, after the National Point title, Domi Exo, who recently won to become the second featherweight champion for the women in MLW after the whole tournament, Domi Exo, who I'm getting to like and I'm starting to get behind. And she beats Ava Everett. Pretty convincing good match. Ava Everett... Even in the, in the promos, I didn't ever get to watch her in WXW, but I like her so far. She's got good spunk. And she came in here. The thing is, Domi Exo and Ava Everett, I think if they were in better shape, they could have been impact knockouts. They're not. They're, they're good. I like them. But it's like maybe if they had the chance to go and get out there to train and get to a bigger part of the card, maybe that's down the line for them. I don't know. I mean, Ava Everett's been out there for a while, so I don't know if they're going to be looking at, if any companies are going to be looking at her outside of WXW. But like Domi Exo right now, being exposed here to MLW, this is where you have to remember too. Willow Nightingale, before we saw her in AEW now, and now she's competing what, for the Owen Hart tournament? Just saying, for me, Will Nightingale shined in MLW in a very short time. And I was like, and they put her over and, and she was on AEW Dark for a long time. And I was thinking, wait a minute, Will Nightingale's pretty good. And Court Bauer had her under the watch there for a while. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. That was one thing I just saw too. I was like, okay, but this is the one thing I will say too about MLW. Unlike NWA, Billy Corgan, it's difficult for him to go ahead and and take the constant transition of stars that might be gone, going away and moving the other rosters. Okay. It is tough, man. And, and NWA power. Remember that guy for the early part of the NWA power first season, right? You saw him out there with Eli Drake with Nick, uh, with Nick, all this, you know, and strictly business and the whole gimmick right there. And Camille, who's just like, we just got to notice this, amazon woman that's just amazing like really camille is the reason to watch that damn at the nwa show she is the best reason she's amazing and even bully ray i agree with her because i agree with him because of the fact that they trained her she is one of the best women's wrestlers that are not on a main roster that that she's not on AEW, she's not in WWE, and she's not an impact like if there was a way to get her billy corgan has he has a good eye on certain talent. He really does. Some of the others I'm still working with. I mean, listen, the nepotism to have Kerry Morton out there, that's fine. I, I got no problem there. But there's others where Thrillbilly Sauce Mason, 
I'm trying to get into him. I'm trying. He's good, but there's like the character doesn't get to me good. And then I think about the people that are under the stable for Scion. I'm trying to get into right with uh, Idol Media and Sports Manager Austin Idol, who's a great damn heel, old school heel, right? Uh, Jack Stain, not much into him. When I think about Jordan Clearwater, not much into him. There's that part I'm not much into, but I'm like trying to work on this here and trying to get onto things, right? Now, I didn't make mention that Siren now is no longer with Austin Idol. I forgot to mention that what happened to Crockett Cup back in June, but I hadn't paid attention to NWA in a while. There was part of that too. And, you know, among other things, I just know that when I look at what's going on with MLW, Court Bauer does a very good job when he does lose people on his roster, he can really pretty much pivot and he can bring in new talent and come on board. Like Kevin Blackwood. I don't even know this guy yet, but the crowd at 2300 Arena, when they talked about the open draft, big time. And he got Matt Cardona, who Matt Cardona for a while was working over in NWA. And, you know, they made him champion for a little while, but they didn't make him the main champion. Like they, you know, had him go up against all this and then Tyrus and then Cardona was just like, you know, they, they made him as this disruptor and there's nothing there for him right now. So Cardona now he's in GCW. He's made a good name for himself. He's definitely made himself the indie guy. And, you know, he's, you know, got, uh, he definitely has made himself a wrestler's wrestler. Like, you know, now the crowd will not look at him as Zack Ryder. No, they won't look at him as anything else. And now the one thing I'm also curious about is what, you know, Mr. St. Laurent, what's he doing now that you left Microman? And now we're going to get, what is it? Titan, uh, world Titan wrestling. So he's getting for the WWE guys. So like my guess is Brian Myers is making his way over or something like that. I don't know. Something like that. So we'll find out, but that's what it looks like. It's going to be happening to me. Tracy Williams, Timothy Thatcher. These guys are having the tough guy match, right? The strong style for whatever happened. Timothy Thatcher must've just taken like a blunt, shot i don't know if it was a ddt i don't know if it was like a, a shot he took you know and a forearm or something like that but or a, yeah the uh they have the forearm or an uppercut but thatcher got a concussion knocked out and could not continue smart referee stopped it they covered for time unfortunately that made sam adonis get some time to go and talk and honestly sam adonis could be annoying but he's good in his role here it wasn't sam adonis in the nwa for a while too i think right until he joined it with the uh, Azteca crew and he was with Cesar Duran. And the Azteca group is still around there, but Cesar Duran is to, nowhere to be found. Persona non grata. Where is Cesar Duran? He's not been part of this. Like they, they stopped the whole Lucha Underground feel to it. The Azteca part, I don't know what happened there. So I'm curious where the Mexican component of the show was. They didn't have that except for Microman. Which, by the way, uh, Microman, did they have a match? I don't think they did. But Microman and, yeah, there was supposed to be another match where Microman, it was a six-man tag, right? Microman, and then it was going to be the two guys he came out with to the ring, and I forget who it was. Oh, uh, the one called Manders, and then I forget the other guy's name. And it was supposed to be the, what it was, the, the FBI and Jesus Rodriguez, but they didn't have that match. So they had the run-in instead. Okay. And I was in the country, country whipping match. Mance Warner gets the win. Mance Warner coming back after a while. He comes back in. He's still over with the crowd. He does the extreme matches. He works out for that. That's good. Another hardcore match to appease the 2300 crowd, the former ECW arena with a curious Ricky Shane Page over Juicy Finale, Lance and Hawaii. I guess Juicy Finale is starting to lose some weight because he's not looking as overly big. Looks better with the braids, by the way, not the big poof that he normally has. And Lance and Hawaii, I think there's always going to be people looking at him. I always say to myself, when I look at a couple of Samoans that Court Bowers has under his in his roster, he has Jacob Fatu and Lance Anawai and Juicy Finale. So he's got Samoans on his side that are attached to the Usos and Roman Reigns and all that family. And they could very well, I could always see some point, but the good thing was I said it before, going back to Ric Flair's last match last year. When he was out there and he took on Josh Alexander, right? That was a barn burner of a match. That was a hell of a time. Fatu was world heavyweight champion for MLW, right? 
no, no, he wasn't champion. That's right. He was former champion. And then he took on uh, Alexander, who was champion for Impact. And those guys had a good match. You know, it wasn't mm, a big deal made about it, but like they had a very good match on a very good card. I will say that too. But I'm always wondering if the Bloodline storyline will ever have something where, you know, now that Roman Reigns is no longer even attached to the Usos. We're going to talk about the trial of Roman Reigns. I'm going to bring that up a little bit later on after this post show, but you know, after the, uh, we recover the rest of the, the card. So I'm just going to say that part. At some point, I think if they wanted to do that, I don't think they could do that now. Like, I don't want to have more bloodline members brought on just for the sake of, because it'll be like NWO. Cause that's where the NWO made a mistake of like bringing new people on to change it. But I think you could do something where, you know, I don't know if they're going to bring anybody else. And I don't know what they're going to do with the bloodline anyway. But I guess the Usos are definitely out. That's definitely been made a point. I don't think they can bring them back together. But like I said, I'll bring it up in a few minutes. So, new MLW World Tag Team Champions, the Kieran Ricky Zane Page of The Calling. By the way, was Raven even out there? I don't think I saw Mandy Leone. I don't think I saw Raven. They did have something out there, you know, the show... The, the setup for the match, but like, did Raven even have a promo on there? I don't remember if he did or not, but like to think that Raven wasn't out there with the crowd to, you know, the, for that 2300 crowd Raven coming out to the arena. I don't know why he wasn't out there, but that should have been a thing. So I don't know what happened there, but there you got new tag team champions. And then we get into, so we got three title changes. Pretty good on that card. And Alex Kane, who, yeah, Hammerstone comes out. By the way, he's lost. They said that he lost 15 pounds on commentary. As for commentary, Joe Dombrowski, he's very good. I, I think he's, in the last year or so, he was working on the color commentary alongside Rich Bocchini. And now Dombrowski's obviously Court Bauer's guy. And, you know, I, I mean, I think, what was it? Dombrowski was the representative for MLW at Rick Flutter's last match. And now he's been here for the last year, it feels like, doing commentary solely with MLW, but he's had a couple of other people that have been doing the, the the broadcast with him. And now we got Matt Stryker along with him. Matt Stryker, you know, he's good in his parts. Tonight he was good. He wasn't overly cringy. He wasn't overly with, like, you know, bad references. I think he's learned that he can't, there's just certain things he can't be doing out there. But the, the, the Matt Stryker was still Matt Stryker. He still has, like, his quirks that you expect but he's also not raspy because like if you're doing tapings with him either on impact wrestling who was doing it for a while or you have him over with mlw you get straight into that raspy and like and you just can't listen to him he just you know he has only like a a certain amount of energy in him and then he kind of just shuts down he does it he kind of just goes pedestrian but he was fine here for the pay-per-view he was definitely into it excited he added to it. I still think he doesn't know the product great. You know, he's not doesn't know much of his history of MLW, but he was good enough to get in here. And the guy was a Christian Oliver that had that on for like a couple of tapings. Did not care for him. So there was another guy they had on with Rich Bokini, and I forget the guy's name. He wasn't bad. But maybe somewhere down the line you bring him on. By the way, no Willie Mack on this show tonight either. Interesting. They didn't put him on the show. But Maybe that's going to change around. And I think with the extra addition of talent, that's going to make a big difference. So they're already saying that now the court Bauer has these shows, he's got to have talent on and he's going to increase. What happens next? Like, okay, Alex King gets the win. And by the way, by submission, strong, definitive win. You know, it was just Kane out there. Now he did have, his stooge out there and I was fine, but like seriously, you know, Alex Kane, he's over now. People are into him. He turned face more or less. And there he kind of like made the switch kind of a bit of a double turn. And I guess Hammerstone goes heel now, right? He goes back to heel. I think they could do that now after all this time. That doesn't sound bad to me. Personally, I'd love to go and see Hammerstone come back and do the dynasty again, but you no, know, maybe or somebody else, something else they could do. I don't know yet, but the card was good. Like there were a couple of matches, you know, they're a little pedestrian. The, the extreme matches are, that's what you're going to get in Philadelphia. And I think if you're just building up the roster, you get a few more matches in there. We're going to get something better, but the women's match was good. They start off nice with 
Fatu and Tankman, I like that setup. And Alex Kane's the right move to beat Alex Hammerstone and be new champion. I, I, I like the moves of the titles. I do. And can we get Myron Reed back, huh? Like, I'd like to get him back because I do like the young goat. I really do like him. And I'm not sure why he's not anywhere else at the moment. And we also haven't had Davey Richards out there in a while. Is, is he? Oh, no, because Davey Richards had the uh, controversy. So, yeah, he's not out there anymore. The whole the domestic violence thing. I forgot. I don't think I even talked about that. Yeah, there's that part, too. That sucks. It sucks for him. So, anyway, that's the setup. That's where we're at. Good show tonight. Trial of Roman Reigns. Now, there are some wrestling fans that don't give a shit about this. But look, this is pure soap opera. This is like Marvel Comics good, okay? This is what we need in WWE, right? Okay? WWE really does need this kind of storyline. It surpasses everything. You give 30 minutes of the bloodline. It did not feel rushed. It did not feel like it was long and tired out. But I'll tell you what. The levels they went with... Roman Reigns to almost submit the wreath and the belt and make Jey Uso the tribal chief just so he could get his low blow back on Jey Uso for the pin. Like all of that is masterful. Like there's detail into that. There's continuity in all this as well. So I think what happens is the civil war continues. That's what I expect happens in SummerSlam. So do we go steel cage? I mean, what do we do to set up Roman and solo against the Usos again? Like, I feel like we need to have another match, right? Like we have to have the civil war continue civil war two. What's the next match? Make it a step. Can't just be a straight up match. I don't know if they're going to do no holds barred, but let's get a match here. That's going to set up well for the bloodline. And for the fact that, you know, it's going to surpass what the World Heavyweight title is right now, what is being done with the Judgment Day or the LWO or whatever else. But I will say this, that for the most part, I'm already at the point now where the Bloodline storyline, for the length they've been able to stretch this out, for what they've been able to do and also attach people into the mix, I'm now ready to say that the bloodline storyline is better than the new world order. And that's saying a lot. The new world order. Basically for me, if you're going to cut the new world order from bash on the beach, 96, right? Which is what? 27 years ago, all the way up to star K 98, where sting wins the belt. I think that's everything I needed with the NWL. After that, the split up, the wolf pack, didn't need any of that. I didn't need anything else of that. And even by 98 in, no, in, in December, I was already thinking, well, the NWO is already bloated real quick here. And they've stretched it out. Sting has been out there. He's been attacking, attacking, attacking. Great storyline. He does get the win. Wasn't the best way to win it, but he did win the belt. And he avenged on the NWO. So I was fine with that. And they took a long time to get there. It's great. But this bloodline storyline, what needs to happen too is that now for the bloodline, they can't do what the NWO did. We need to have, now if Sting was the, the person that was going to ultimately surpass Hulk Hogan and become world heavyweight champion, then Cody Rhodes still needs to be the one that eventually beats Roman Reigns at the end of all this. And Cody becomes the new universal champion, undisputed. And he's the one that will be granted the chance to beat Roman Reigns and become the big super face that he'll be as big as John Cena. I believe that. Cody's still being booked as a star. I don't like him being wedged into the World Heavyweight title mix, but I guess they have to put him somewhere. So Cody, Brock, Seth, Triple Threat, SummerSlam, sure. I guess they're going to set that up. That's fine with me. I don't give a shit. That's okay. Like it, it does make sense to go and bring Brock out there. I know people don't want to see Brock and Cody again, but you know, look, it's just like, it's another wrinkle in the mix, whatever, whatever. It's still the fact that you have previous storylines, previous history with Seth and Cody and pre previous history with Cody and Brock. 
fine. Everybody's all into a tiffy about this. Like, nah, I'm not worried about it. Not really. And so you got that. But there is the storytelling being done here. I don't know how much Paul Heyman's a part of it, but I got to imagine him and Rob Fee, right? The, the guy that, the long-term storyline guy that was brought into the company. I have to believe that those two and, and Vince and Triple H are all coming in and they have a good idea. The end goal is where my concern is. And when is this supposed to be? Because you have to think about the timing of it and what is the end goal. We have to have what is the prepared ending, the payoff. We don't need the payoff now. As I said, Roman Reigns doesn't need to lose the belt. He is still like, I'm not even worried about the fact he doesn't defend it every month. I really don't even care about that. I really haven't worried about that because there is nobody ready for him. And as far as I'm concerned, like I can hear other people out here, my fellow podcast brethren, okay, talking about, oh, well, you know, they're not booking the other guys. The NXT black and gold people are not getting their chance to be up there. I don't give a shit. I don't care. You think Austin Theory's bland? No, he's fine. I got no problem. He's going to work his way up as a champion. He'll work his way. When we're looking at other stars, there is nobody else right now ready. Your Johnny Gargano's, your Karrion Cross's. Karrion Cross now got hurt over age with, with, with his matches with AJ Styles, right? So Karrion Cross is a non factor. Uh, unfortunately, he's a bit fragile, man. That's another time he gets hurt. And now, how long is he going to be on the shelf? It's unfortunate. Let me tell you something, man. Karrion Cross, if that guy was Killer Cross and MLW, Court Bauer would do the right thing with Killer Cross. You know he would. And he had him for a little bit before Killer Cross moved up. Left impact, transitional time, then he goes up to NXT. And I'm like, shit. And I was worried about Killer Cross. And I was still am. And I'm like, well, this is what's gonna happen. So I've been disappointed with Karrion Cross. Not because of him. And he's just not using him right. Okay. And by the way, we're not using brooding characters at all effectively well. Bray Wyatt, Alexa Bliss, just not working. The Viking Raiders, the brooding shit, it's not working. Anything that's dark and dreary, not working. They just can't get it right. And that's just not something for them. So that's not going to, you know, don't even worry about that. But That's a shame to go ahead and see that this guy is not going to be able to make it. But like I said, who other who other stars are there? For me, I can still say if it's not Cody, Seth can still be the guy. And I really think so. Listen, that's the reason why he's World Heavyweight Champion right now. He's doing the work out there. He's being the champion right now. And, you know, Roman's in the back burner with his belt because he's got the bloodline. And the bloodline is just bankable. That's just money being poured out every time. And let's just talk about the contribution, okay? The best part about the bloodline is that all these guys that are a part of it, they're not old. Like, that's the best part. And the BO, you had a bunch of 40-year-olds out there, okay? And Hogan and Nash and Hall, they were already getting up there, man, okay? They want to work so much. Usos, Roman Reigns, they're all relatively young, and they got a lot of ring time left. So if they want to keep it like the only reason that you might see Roman Reigns go away because he's going to go to Hollywood and he will right now with the intellectual property going on and all these different movies that are going on, they're going to start getting to the point where Hollywood's going to have to start saying, we need to build some blockbusters. We can't do it with the same intellectual property anymore. Maybe, you know what? Go get Roman Reigns. Who's his agent? Get him over here. We're going to build a new franchise around him. Okay. When, Keanu Reeves, can't, Keanu Reeves can't do John Wick anymore. Go call Roman Reigns. Make him an action star. Okay? When Jason Statham can't keep him do the Meg and can't do Transporter, can't do any other movies, then go call Roman Reigns. If Batista gets old in the tooth, go get Roman Reigns. Seriously. And that's all you got to do, okay? <laughs> that's all there is to it. So, but they did everything so well in the trial of Roman Reigns. Like, they did the trial once again, just like before. Spread it over two segments. Pissed me off, but like they were right to do two segments on it. At the top of the show, great stuff. I loved it all. And then we get to the point where we get that split up, and it's like fantastic. Love all of that. Now, I'll say this too, before we go wrap things up. I did watch Collision like 
pretty genius where I was able to go get the auto rotate on my phone so I can watch Fight TV and watch on the TNT app and watch Collision. I missed the first 20 minutes, but I did catch a great Eliminator tag team match where Switchblade Jay White and Juice Robinson beat FTR and now they go into next week as a collision yeah they're going to be on collision next week the world tag team titles on the line two out of three falls those guys were burning it up CM Punk Samoa Joe great match the Owen Hart tournament sets things up Samoa Joe respect 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 until he puts the coquina clutch on him and CM Punk and Samoa Joe off into an angle so you got some things to set up. Listen, Collision's got some things. House of Black, I like all the stuff with Andrade, but Andrade needs a couple of other people. Where's this faction Ungobernable? Let's get some people back, huh? Where's Roosh? Is Roosh hurt, I guess? And honestly, let's get Bandito over there, huh? Let's go. Let's go. So I want to see that. House of Black needs to get like another trios to go up against them. And, you know, at some point, I love they're going to see whenever we can get pentagon jr phoenix and pack back together death triangle i want to get those guys back i would love to go and see them somewhere if we can get them back over on collision that would be good too you know it's all set up collision was good yeah, a couple of good matches are definitely going to take away from that which i like luchasaurus is going to take on sean spears eh, okay and then battle of the belts is coming up next week How about that i don't even know they were going to still do it but yeah Three hours of collision and battle of the belts next week to go with that. But at the same time, at the same time, I also have to worry about that. I'm going to watch and it is on Saturday, isn't it? So collision are going to have, damn it, man. It's another week of wrestling. So post show next week, we got to talk about impact wrestling slam anniversary, which will be next week. I'll be watching that and I will do a post show next Saturday on it. Plus, we had to do Collision and Battle of the Belts 7. I got to talk all about that, too. Damn, man, that's a lot of stuff going on. Wow. Oh, and also, uh, Scorpio, Sky, uh, Scorpio Sky comes back. That's good. Maybe they'll go and push him back up and see what they're going to do with him again. That'll be interesting. Maybe him going back after Luchasaurus and the TNT title. That'd be a nice move. Where Scorp tries to go back after that belt. That'd be a nice move. And then, you know, we'll see what else you're going to do. So I like it all. That's the show for tonight. Thanks for listening in. Of course, remember, please rate and review Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Please do that. And subscribe to the show wherever you subscribe to podcasts. Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google. Also, remember, I'm on social media. And you can find me all over the place, okay? You want to go and check it out? Join me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and threads and TikTok at King of Podcasts. And of course, all my content, kingofpodcasts.com. Come back this Wednesday for another Wrestling is Real podcast because wrestling needs us. <laughs> <laughs>